What's up people, this is David, and today I am going to show you how to make a Facebook share button on your website. And in particular, I'm gonna do that on a Drupal 7 website. Um, and why Drupal, you ask? It's because, well, I've been working on uh, Drupal for a few years now. Uh, it's powerful, it's flexible, I like it. Um, and I think it's a good way to build websites. So this kind of applies to any sort of website, including WordPress or your own um, CMS of any kind. Um, but that's what I'm focusing on today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment or you can contact me at my website or you can contact me by email. Um, so why don't we go ahead and dive in. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is what is our end result? So let's go ahead and go to my live production site where I just installed this and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where this button lives and I click it and here we go so this is what happens you click share uh, and whoever is using the website is going to pop up here as the user and they can share it on their timeline their friends timeline or what have you so let's go ahead and close that and move on now this is going to be a step-by-step -step demo um, because I want to go through it quickly and I don't want you to have that urge to fall asleep like a lot of tutorials will give you. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start with step one, which is to create a Facebook developer account. Um, you go to this site here, developers.facebook.com, and you're going to need to sign up and create an account, which is free and takes about 30 seconds. Step two you need to register an app. And as you can see here, I already created an app for my production site, Hello Fix It. In this case, app equals website. Um, app could equal mobile app or whatever the case may be, but in this case, app equals website. That's the only thing you have to remember. Um, I also created an app for um, the purposes of this video called Blah. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, okay, and the app you I created called blah has an app ID which they assign to you and that's going to be really important in a second here. The other thing that's important is you need to type in a domain and in in the case of my site it was hellofixit.com and then I click save and uh oh they give me a uh, an error here. Well the reason for that is because I already used that domain on another site. So we're going to ignore that. We're going to go back to the first page here. What's our next step? Is something called SDK code. Uh, so that um, conveniently enough is something you can also get from Facebook and they have a page for that which you can see here. It's developers.facebook.com slash doc slash javascript slash quick start or you can just google it um, S, uh, Facebook JavaScript SDK and then it'll take you here and you find this code here and you copy it this is really important and you're gonna just paste it onto somewhere safe um, which in this case is gonna be my text editor okay why don't we take a look at the next step um, the next step is to create a JavaScript function and why are we gonna do that well when somebody clicks that button, uh, it needs to run some code. And in this case, it's going to run a JavaScript function which calls Facebook, uh, which calls, calls Facebook's API and says, hey, I'm trying to share this web page. So that's what we're going to do next. And in this case, that's also pretty easy because uh, I got all this code from Facebook. And you can also get it from Facebook. You just Google uh, that you are looking for the share function. Um, you wrap it, what I did, I wrapped it in a function name that I call blah, and I'm going to copy and paste it to be right next to my code for the SDK. And then I'm going to fix my formatting so that it looks pretty because I'm a little bit OCD. Okay. Boom. Oh, one more thing to fix. Okay, good. So here we have our job, all our JavaScript code that we're going to need for this project. Now, 
Step five is we got to take that JavaScript code and put it on our website so that it'll show up and so that it'll work. And the way that you do that in Drupal is, um, or one way you can do that in Drupal is you can create a block. Um, this is sort of the lazy man's way. And if you don't like it, feel free to leave me a comment or send me an email. I would love to hear from you. Um, this is just my way of saving a little bit of time right now. So basically a block is the way that Drupal um, allows you to place content on your website. So why don't we go ahead and do that now. We're going to go to structure and then blocks. And I've already created one here called FB share. So I'm going to click configure. And I'm going to scroll down. The thing that you're going to do is you're going to give it a name. Um, you're going to give it a machine name here and you're going to leave the title blank because the title, if you don't leave it blank, will show up on the, the web page itself. And you don't want that because all this stuff is going to be um, silent. It's going to it's going to not show up on the site. Um, now I'm going to go back to my text editor. And I almost forgot. What did we forget? Look, your app ID. We have to replace that with the app ID that we got from Facebook. So why don't we go back, copy and paste, paste. Okay, good. Now we're going to take all this code, copy it, go back to our block, paste it, and it's all pasted. Now we're going to scroll down. And I like to put full HTML. It's probably not even necessary. Actually, it is probably necessary because of the script tag. But uh, we're going to place this block in a region on the site. And in this case, I think the main important thing here is that it is above where the button is located, which is in the footer. So I just put it in the content region, and it just happens to work. Um, the other thing you want to look at is you want it to be on all pages. So that uh, because this button is going to show up on all pages and you need it to work um, regardless of what page the user clicks it on. So why don't we save it? Okay, and we're going to go back to our home page and we're going to click and we're going to make sure that it is we're going to refresh and then make sure that it is here. So view page source and then I'll just search for the function name, which is blah. And there you go. So here's our SDK code, all this stuff. And then right here is the uh, blah function that we created or we actually stole. And so good. Now we know that it is actually on our site. So let's take a look at the next step. Um, step six, we need to edit the theme so that the button points to our JavaScript function. Well, how are we going to do that? Let's go to the folders where we have our theme code. And this is going to be located under, in Drupal, it's your main domain name. And then the folders are sites, all, themes, and then the name of your theme, templates, and then the actual template file, in this case, is page.tpl.php. Let's open it. And it takes us there. So uh, how are we going to find out where this where this code is. Um, well, how about we search on the word Facebook? And here we go. Um, if this doesn't look familiar, what I'm highlighting here is the button itself. So what I need to do is wrap a wrap a link around that button, an href tag, which I did here. So a href, and you'll notice something different here from a normal link, a normal HTML link you'll notice that it's not pointing to uh, a web page, it's just a hashtag, which is sort of a placeholder. The important part of this is the onClick tag. So onClick, and then it equals the JavaScript function name. And then a little extra thing here is return false. What that does is it prevents the web browser from uh, trying to go to another web page. So the only thing that happens when the user clicks the button is it runs the JavaScript function because that's the only functionality we want for that button. So, okay, we've added that and now we're going to save this and exit and we'll go back to our checklist. And what is the last step? Well, the last step is to test it. Why don't we go ahead and do that?
So to test it, what we do is we just go and repeat the same thing that we did in the very beginning. We're just going to click the button and boom, it works. Um, the thing to keep in mind here, and this has to do with the last line on my checklist, um, problems to be aware of. And this threw me off because I was working at the very end of the day and I'm a morning person and I was trying to, I was banging my head against the wall trying to figure out why this doesn't work. Well, guess what? When we have it on our production site, it works. But when you have it in your local environment, as you do, as you can see here, um, let's take a look at what happens then. Click the button and you get an error message because guess what? Facebook is looking at where the request is coming from, what domain the request is coming from. And if it doesn't match the domain that you typed into your developer account when you set up your app, you will get this error. Um, and it might cause you a little pain and headache. All right, so that's the end of our uh, demo here. And I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Um, and most of all, I hope that it saved you a lot of time. If you have any requests for similar videos to this on how to set up uh, anything in Drupal, um, please leave a comment, send me an email, or visit my website, um, and I'll be happy to uh, give that a try for you. All right, later.